Celestial mechanics is the branch of astronomy that deals with the motions of objects in outer space. Historically, celestial mechanics applies principles of physics to astronomical objects, such as stars and planets, to produce ephemeris data. Modern analytic celestial mechanics started with Isaac Newton's Principia of 1687. The name celestial mechanics is more recent than that. Newton wrote that the field should be called rational mechanics. Prior to Kepler there was little connection between exact, quantitative prediction of planetary positions, using geometrical or arithmetical techniques, and contemporary discussions of the physical causes of the planet's motion. Celestial mechanics is the branch of science that studies the movements of celestial bodies under the action of natural forces. The subject of celestial mechanics is the mechanical form of the motion of matter. The movement of different celestial bodies can be described as diurnal motion, annual motion, and precession of the equinoxes. The term astrodynamics is often used to refer to the celestial mechanics of artificial satellite motion. Celestial mechanics has its beginnings in early astronomy in which the motions of the Sun, the Moon, and the five planets visible to the unaided eye, Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn, were observed and analyzed. The word planet is derived from the Greek word for wanderer, and it was natural for some cultures to elevate these objects moving against the fixed background of the sky to the status of gods. This status survives in some sense today in astrology, where the positions of the planets and sun are thought to somehow influence the lives of individuals on Earth. Perturbations and problems of two bodies, the approximate nature of Kepler's laws. The constraints placed on the force for Kepler's laws to be derivable from Newton's laws were that the force must be directed toward a central fixed point and that the force must decrease as the inverse square of the distance. In actuality, however, the Sun, which serves as the source of the major force, is not fixed but experiences small accelerations because of the planets, in accordance with Newton's second and third laws. The planets attract one another, so that the total force on a planet is not just that due to the Sun. Other planets perturb the elliptical motion that would have occurred for a particular planet if that planet had been the only one orbiting an isolated sun. That Kepler's laws are such good approximations to the actual planetary motions results from the fact that all the planetary masses are very small compared to that of the sun. Newton's second law for a particular mass is a second-order differential equation that must be solved for whatever forces may act on the body if its position as a function of time is to be deduced. The exact solution of this equation, which resulted in a derived trajectory that was an ellipse, parabola, or hyperbola, depended on the assumption that there were only two point particles interacting by the inverse square force. This gravitational two-body problem has an exact solution that reproduces Kepler's laws.